Today, we're going over a basic tutorial of Lightroom. I use Lightroom Classic because I believe that it's better for my workflow than Lightroom CC, but that's up to you. Okay, so once you've imported your photos and gone up to the Develop tab, you'll met with these basic sections. I always start off by applying the lens corrections and just enabling profile corrections and removing chromatic aberration. That just fixes up vignetting around the edge of lenses and removes distortion. Then I close that section and come up to Basic. In here, I use the White Balance selector to get the correct white balance. Then I come down to Exposure and I'll adjust the tone so it's accurate to what I saw in real life. This is about right. As you can see, there's a lot of motion blur in this photo, even though it was shot at 1 4,000th of a second. I have an upcoming tutorial on the basics of Photoshop so you can remove that motion blur. I'm now gonna add some clarity and texture so that way the photo looks cleaner, but not too much of it. As I said in my beginner photography mistakes video, you can easily over edit. Then once you're done with the basic, come into the tone curve section. Here you can pull out even more brightness from the highlights to make sure you retain all the detail in the wave. Now you can come down to the HSL section. Here you can adjust the hues of individual colors, saturation and luminosity. So if I wanted, I could take the hue of orange and change it to be a pink or a green. Then if I come over to the saturation section, I can bring more saturation into the oranges or less. I'm going to add more because I want that part of the image to pop. Then the luminance section, you can brighten up just that one specific color. Now you can come down to the color grading section where you can add an overall tint to each part of the image. For example, say I wanted to make the highlights more red. You can add red into just the highlights and you can add blue to the shadows. That doesn't look very good and I personally don't like that effect so I'm going to undo it, but that's up to you. Now if you come into detail, you can add sharpening to the image. Again, as I said in my beginner photography mistakes video, you can over sharpen to make it look too digital. There's noise reduction there if your photo needs it, but this photo doesn't. And if you come down to this bottom section, you have camera calibration. And here you can fix any problems with your camera sensor. For example, if it's too purple, you can drag it towards the teal side. If it's too yellow, you can drag it towards the greenish side. And if it's too orange, you can drag it towards the magenta. And now we come to this row up here. So first you have the crop tool, where you can crop to different aspect ratios, like 4 to 5 for Instagram. And you can adjust the angle here. However, I'm going to leave it at its original angle. If you want to switch to landscape, just drag to the outside of the photo. If you want to switch to portrait, drag to the center of the photo. And now you've cropped your photo. Next, you have the spot removal tool. So say I wanted to remove the car here, I'd select the spot removal tool and click on the car. And then you can select a piece of the road. It just clone stamps, so it's not that good. I recommend using Photoshop for this, which again, I have that upcoming video. But if you can get it to work in Lightroom, it'll work. Next, you have red eye reduction. If you use the flash, you can reduce the red eyes that a flash causes. Then you have the graduated filter so you can drag up from the bottom or the left or the right and create a gradual fall off of whatever effects are selected in here so if I was to change the hue drastically it would slowly fall off as it went through the photo then if you hover your mouse over the dot you can move around the entire thing and if you hover it over the line next to the center dot you can rotate it then you can adjust the two outer lines by hovering over them then we have the radial filter which you just draw a circle and then by default outside of that circle you'll apply the same effect Effect as we mentioned before but what I commonly do is close the drop down turn up the feather invert the mask and then change effects inside that circle so now I can adjust specific parts of the image like an eye or an area of the skin and finally we have the brush and with the brush you can paint an effect onto anything and then if you hold down option or alt on windows it brings up a minus and you can subtract from that brush scrolling changes the size and if you hold down space while using any of these effects it'll allow you to zoom in and pan around another tip is that if you press O you can view where the mask is affecting so you can see that here I've painted in this water area and that's how you do a basic light matter. Now remember, when you're editing your own photos, spend a lot more time on each effect than I have today. But now you know what each effect does, you can spend time adjusting it so that way your photo is exactly what you wanted when shooting. Click here to learn about beginner photography mistakes, but first click here to subscribe.